Hey everyone. So somehow my screen's not showing. Well, that's annoying. What the heck? Um, why wouldn't my screen be showing? Well, um, let me see. This was working last time I used it. This is a, uh, nope, not that. I'm looking at my settings here. Yeah, there's no, there's no, um, oh yeah, iMac right there. What's going on? Okay, let's see. There we go. I learned a lesson today. All right. Welcome everyone to a late night cocktails and coding. This time, I have a cocktail. This is an old pal, which is Campari sweet vermouth and some bourbon old pal cocktail i misspelled it cocktail i still misspelled it i swear i've had one sip and that's it but the old pal vermouth campari whiskey in this case one 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 point five one point five on the booze the others are boozy too but um, there you go. So that's the cocktail of the night, and this is the coating of the night. Uh, let me also quickly log into my YouTube on this laptop so I can ensure that everything is being seen as expected. Let's see. Cocktail and coating. For some reason, it's logged into a different user. I don't know why. Hey. Hey, you made an old pal. How was it, Chris? Did, did you did you enjoy it? Was it up your alley? All right. Um, let's see. So I actually did stuff. For those of you who did see the previous iterations, what I was working on. Let's go remind myself uh, what was happening. So we're dealing with the, um, whole right click on an item in the inventory to show some details about it. So I did some work on that and it's going pretty well. So if we go over and go into our inventory, oh, I should turn on system preferences sound and go to microphone. That way you can hear all the placeholder audio I've got. There we go, that works. All right, so if we right click now, we get this little thing and we get this little smoke effect, something I decided to add. I was going to try having this rotate slightly um, because this is a 3D object. Uh, it's similar to these, where these are 3D objects, um, but uh, the pivot's really over here and, and it needs to be over there because it's the same object here and the pivot here is always in the top left corner of whatever grid this is in um, so making it rotate would require quite a bit of work and I decided that was too much I wanted to do at the moment so instead I just add the smoke particle behind it again it's a 3d particle just a orthographic camera I believe at first it was terrible but I didn't have enough bourbon oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah um, the one to one to one which is I why I see common for a Negroni which is gin instead of bourbon, um, is usually fine. But on this one, I 1.5 on the whiskey is a preferred amount I found for me at least. Um, and I also, I mean, I'm, I just put it on ice and I leave the ice in there. So it gets a little more watered down as, as time goes on. Uh, partly that's because I don't freeze my glasses or anything. So it's going to get warm and it's not as good warm. It gets, it, you know, it's, um, the Campari and Vermouth are very sticky when it's warm. But yeah, it's been a, a recent favorite for the nighttime cocktail. Uh, so this loads up Magic Book of Healing Touch, the value, that's body magic, some flavor text, and if we put this mace here, we can see there's a mace. I haven't put any of the other stuff here so it's bringing up all it can but there's no value there's no flavor text I haven't yet uh, populated this details um, so let's do that because I want to see this mace up here um, 
But same with all these others. There's not going to be any details. But they come up with the name and the type of skill it requires. Leather, or in this case, will be chain. In this case, shield. And hopefully, axe. Yep, there we go. So that's, that's that. And if uh, we look at it in the the uh, scene view, I'll just go like that. Um, and you can see it comes up and let me get to the magic book. You can see a giant magic book there, um, right here. Can I do, I can't do that at the same time while right clicking and the minute I unright click, it goes, goes away. So, uh, but like these are 3D, this is 3D as well. It's just right in front of that plane. So, it's two. It does. It's just a small amount of, of uh, extra booze or bourbon is is important. That, that's the thing that's interesting about the cocktails. And really, it comes down to what bourbon you choose as well, because they are different. Um, you know, if you are into finding the flavor you enjoy while sipping, then understanding the exact amount is important. Hey, Jason Story, how are you? We were talking about bourbon. Um, Irish folks are known for their whiskey and Scottish folks for their scotch, Kentucky folks for their bourbon. All right. So to get those working, what was I doing? Okay. So I added description, um, right here. And I was thinking I, I might add a, a variety of descriptions so that, um, each magic book might have a slightly different description might have like a pool of 10 to 20 descriptions and if there's none assigned then it will pull one from a list of descriptions that could be fun uh, maybe I'll do that later um, the other thing is I added a skill required um, actually it's not pulling from this so maybe I am gonna remove this I think I added this and then I thought maybe I don't need but I did add uh, gold value so if we go to our mace um, we can make our gold value something, let's say 150. 150 pieces of pure gold, um, a solid um, block or a solid metal head on a sturdy wooden stick. This will do some damage. All right, so that's the description for that. And then we have this to scale and position. Now for the magic book, I did three, three, three. And the position is these numbers. This is the thing where it's just going to take some setup where I'm going to have to write down stuff. Um, so I'm going to start by just copying that and seeing going from there. Uh, so negative 798, 308, and negative 459. Um, and then if we press play, we should see exactly what happens. One other thing I did add, by the way, um, when I added these fields, the saved data didn't have those fields. So I did add some code. I, I wonder if it's already up. Oh, it is already up. I added this bit. Um, so whenever I add a new field, uh, I'll just add this. This is on the load data. Um, when the data is loaded, it will do this relink player equipment. This is where it will relink scriptable objects. Um, but in this case, it's also going to relink key item, um, item key value data. So the description here, it'll grab the key value for the description. And um, if it hasn't been created yet, it will create one. So the save data will get any new data I've added in the scriptable object and update that value. So uh, even if I save it while it says, hey, this can contains some source of some sort of power, I can change that later. And um, if somebody who loads up the game, then we'll get the new version, which is gonna be really cool when I do have an alpha version that people can play. Hopefully most of my changes won't break things for people because uh, that would be annoying, I would assume. Ooh, a video for tomorrow. What's your video for tomorrow? This is the one you're going to be releasing on your private coffee page. Any uh, sneak peek or not sneak peek, but hint as to what the content is all about? Let's see. Let's see our mace now wrong button inventory mace come over here and there it is so now we can see that the mace didn't really come up so the problem i'm facing is the mace and we got the 
gold value. We got the flavor text, but we don't have a mace. There is a mace. I'm sure it came up. The problem is that it's somewhere. And when I unright click, it goes away. Um, so I, uh, and the object itself disappears, which is, which is uh, a problem for figuring out where it's supposed to live. I was hoping it would actually just show up um, kind of where the book shows up, but it's not. Um, just make sure I didn't forget something. Mace inventory spell. No, 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 no. None of that's needed. Um, yeah, so it must be uh, somewhere it gets created. I wonder where it gets spawned. Let's see. Details panel. Skill required. Let's see. There's got to be a method here. Display information. Instantiate item. That sounds appropriate. Let's look at that. So it's going to instantiate as a child of the transform of this. So UI details. Um, nope, not directional light. Where are my UI details? Not in scene. It's going to be down here. And game UI canvas, maybe. Um, UI info canvas, there we go. So this is the panel that comes up and let's see. So there's the magic book, disappears. Again, here's the mace. So it does appear, it does exist. So we need to comment out the, dis the, the uh, destruction of it. So um, this part right here, I'm gonna add a debug. Now this is gonna be something I'm gonna have to remove later. So we're gonna say, um, close if uh, input dot get key, and we'll say key code dot. Uh, I'm gonna say option, left option. What would that be? I don't know what which one of these is option. None of these are options. Uh, I'm going to say left control then. Left control. Then we will do that. So if we're not holding down the left control, then we will destroy the object. Otherwise, we won't. And um, uh, yeah. And if we are else debug.log remove this for shipping because that will be annoying if people realize hey I can make it so it doesn't disappear all right a live YouTube really that's exciting I'll have to tune in They loading data into lists in the editor. I like process easier. I should definitely check in to that one. Um, Jason, do you have a a, um, a a link for that? Is it is it scheduled already that people can click over, give it a thumbs up, and a uh, reminder? Is that a reminder? I'm currently not able to schedule um, specific times. I have a relatively high confidence, um, but not the complete confidence where I feel like I can say Wednesday nights, I'm going to stream from this time to that time. All right. All right. So the, uh, hey, didn't, oh, I didn't hold down control. That's why. All right. Mace is still there. Good. Where is it? Hey, where is it? Oh, there it is. It's tiny though. All right. So it went to three. We clearly need to make it bigger. Five, five, five. Ten. Still tiny. Look at that. Why is it so small? Okay, 300, 300, 300. Wow, that's tiny. Okay, well, we'll do 600, 600, 600. Too big. 450, 450, 450. All right, and then if we move the position over and up, and maybe 
Oh, I guess I didn't save rotation, so we'll just we'll just do position for now. I think this is something that I'm going to end up changing uh, for production. It's just we need it for now. So I'll go there. I'm going to write down these uh, values. Negative 700 and 327 and negative 459. And then we'll do 450. And um, then I'm going to go to my... items and we'll type those in there negative 700 327 and negative 409 and oops not that and 450 all around that's a much bigger scale um, than the magic book bot got which was only three all right so now it should work Rotoscoping. The first time I heard rotoscoping was in regards to Star Wars when episode one, The Phantom Menace, was coming out, and there was all the hubbubaloo about that. And I was in film school, and I made myself a. Actually, at the time I was in film school, I was in just community college doing acting stuff and directing. And I made myself a lightsaber video where I rotoscoped it frame by frame in Photoshop. And um, it looked really cool, except I used a, a PVC pipe or something like that. And I record myself like a true uh, uh, pre-YouTube person um, in my living room. And I totally broke the overhead light with my lightsaber. It made a cool effect for the video, but my mom wasn't happy with me. Uh, and this was, of course, pre-YouTube, so I didn't go viral. Otherwise, I'm sure I could have. But, you know. You live, you learn. You live, you learn. All right, let's check this mace out, see if it works. There we go. So now the mace is there. Uh, the particles don't look as cool with the mace there, and the mace could probably move over a little bit, but that's okay for now. That's all we're really looking for, to see that shows up, like the book. The book looks a lot cooler, I think, in this position. Um, so maybe at some point we'll make a, a, sec a second version of the prefab so I can make it angled or something, or we'll put the rotation here as well. But... For now, that's not so much of an issue. Um, so let's do these ones. Why not? Um, let's see. I'll pause for now. We're going to do the curious ba uh, wild basic. This solid piece of metal will block a fair amount of damage. Uh, I'm going to need to hire a writer one day, I bet. All right, I'm just going to keep the uh, same values here. We'll do 333 for now um, and do those values. I'm going to do that for kind of everything, I guess. Um, leather vest, we'll do the same. The issue with clicking oh so yeah so what i ended up doing this is actually a good tip so i don't mind revisiting so each one of these squares here is actually a button there's a ui button there and when i left click it triggers the ui, UI button and it was just using the built-in um inspector events for that um so i did some googling uh this happened a little bit later in the stream i did some googling and i found some previously viewed <laughs> forum links uh, that got to, um, let's see, grid buttons that basically said this code right here, uh, replace, um, instead of using the built-in click, replace it, it with this code, um, and subscribe to the event data. Uh, so now you can do left click, middle click and right click, which is what we're doing here that we use the right click and again, the right click close. Um, and then the other thing I was missing was the inheritance, uh, being able remembering to re inherit from those. Um, once you do that, works really well. And actually, it, it, I started thinking like, why isn't the right click built into the inspector? I guess it doesn't have to be. In most cases, it doesn't have to be. But um, yeah, that, that was the solution there. So um, a simple leather vest more stylish than functional. 
Okay. And we'll do this. I'm really just typing whatever comes to mind. I think I'm going to have to add in rotation. It's not the worst. Cool. Now, um, I have to restart it so that those values get put into the data, the save data. Yeah, the default for, um, for the built-in events is definitely left-click only. Um, I don't think it registers right-click or middle-click at all. And so if you want to separate those two, you, I guess you need to do it via the code, which I actually prefer. Um, I do like the built-in events, but you know, unless I'm just doing one or two things, um, it's too much to set up all the clicking around. So, all right, let's see. I guess we don't need to like this one, any of them now because they should all have some sort of information. Let's see, and we can start setting them up. All right. Ah, I forgot to put the gold values. That's fine. And I will control unclick in order to save these and see where the heck is this? This one is what is going on with this? All right. Um, oh, I flipped these around. Uh, I must have flipped these around in the Where is it? Shield. Shield, shield, shield. There it is. Uh, yeah, I put the scale in the wrong spot. Did I do that for all of them? I may have. Uh, so let's see. Four fifty-nine, and we'll do three three three. Although that looked like it needed to be huge, so alright. So this. I don't know why it zooms out so far. This needs to be probably about there. Probably go bigger. 
And you know what? I think I am going to add rotation. Maybe not. I feel like the normals are backwards on this shield. Yeah, I think those normals might be flipped. It definitely looks like we got flipped normals going on there. Oh well, another day. Let's see. So, write down shield. Is it just me? Or is your handwriting terrible these days too? Because I don't write that much with my hands anymore. And I was never that good to begin with. Alright, so that's shield. And just turn that off. Let's do the curious. Yep, I did the same thing here. Alright, so that's probably too big. Alright, that'll work. This is where having a notebook comes in handy or junk mail envelopes. Junk mail envelopes work really well too for this purpose. X. I did the same thing on all of these. Kind of interesting that the magic book didn't need that much um, scaling, but the others do. All right, what other stuff do I have on these characters? That's it? All right, well, I can't set up the other ones. I can kind of guess their sizes, but until I equip a character with those objects, I'll do that another time. But I'll set up the values that I have and, um, and fix the mistake I made earlier. So, all right, curious what scales first. We didn't have, oh, I did have a leather vest, I just didn't do it. All right, well, we'll do, uh, we'll do the same as the curious and later we'll fix it. put it at the same spot as the hand axe, so the dagger. Mace is already set up. Magic book already set up. Small shield. I gotta do the values too, huh? I don't really have values, but I need to put in something just for, uh, just to have something available in there. Values. Oops. Go 
old value for this will be 200. This will be 160, uh, 150. How about Just making stuff up, really? All right, so that's what I was doing, and let's just make sure it works. It should. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, or today, depending on where you are in the world, for the Game Dev Show at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on Jason Wyman's Game Dev, or Unity 3D College channel. The Game Dev Show, number 20-something. It will be fun. All right, so we got mace, value and stuff, leather vest. Um, that position is off. This needs to be further forward, I think. It's going to be position, let's we'll say 640, negative 641, 641. This is one I didn't actually test before, but I could have, and I just didn't. Let's see. Oh, I paused it. Yeah, so it just needs to be a tiny bit forward. Um, actually, this one too. Didn't take into account the black part. All right, so those work. This will come in handy. Yes, it will. All right, I'm just gonna update those values real quick, and then we can move on to something else. Good to see those working. These are gonna be negative six forty-one. Bring them a little bit closer to the camera. All right. All right, what was I wanting to do next? I think I wanted to get that same system working with this chest, which is going to mean really that I need to revisit my actions script. Um, the action script is attached to the actions object and is intended to be the script that handles player input actions from the user of the game. So yes, we have the play date tomorrow morning. It's it's in it's in just 10 hours and 13 minutes. I won't be staying up all night. Now, Jason's story is on the other side of the world. One third of the way actually I guess, is Ireland the same time zone as, as England? I don't know. But if it is, then it's one third of the way around the world from me. And um, therefore, I think it's early morning for him. So he might just be up until the show. But I am definitely going to be taking a sleep. And yes, uh, it is replica. Corey is correct. I have a whole video on it, actually, and a referral link. So you'll give me some free 30 minutes replica studios. Let's see how many minutes I have. Let's see. Let's see if I can remember which email I used. All right. I have 16 hours now from all these referrals. So thank you very much, everybody who's been signing up through my referral link. But if you go to the videos section, I made this video um, where I used Replica. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's an ad for Unreal Engine. Interesting. 
Interesting. Look, I'm getting an ad for Unreal on 3D Assets for All, unrealengine.com. I'm going to click it. Interesting. I wonder if this was placed by the Unreal Marketplace or by this PolyArt Studio publisher. Either way, interesting. This is why I want to get monetized so that Epic Games can pay me for this. Um, but yeah, so I made this I'm video. To go. You can watch it on your own time. And there is a link to the Replica Studios affiliate thing there or partner thing or whatever it is. But there's also a link to... Um, the Voices module, which is free uh, on the Asset Store, that is what drives the voices. Essentially, it's, it's, it's a very simple setup. Um, just set up uh, or save your scripts, your, your audio, not your scripts, your, your audio with a naming convention. Um, one click import, and this sets itself up, and then you can just call um, a single line of code, just speak. And that's what I use. For these so it's very simple to use so i would suggest checking it out if you haven't already um let's see what did i want to do oh yeah actions this used to work but then i um changed things or something and it doesn't work anymore the whole point was that when i go up to this chest it's supposed to open up there's items in it You work until 7 a.m., then wake up at 12 for Jason's stream. So you must be on the East Coast time. And you work till 7 a.m. Graveyard shift. I used to do that. I used to work at Denny's graveyard shift. I'd get off at 5 a.m. Start at 9, get off at 5 a.m. So I'd get all the teenagers the night before. Oftentimes, I'd fall asleep in a booth around 3 or 4 a.m. And the commuters on Monday morning would wake me up. <laughs> the regular commuters would wake me up so I could serve them coffee and they could tip me 27 cents because most of those guys were not good tippers. And it was Denny's. And it was also 20 years ago. But what can you do? So I feel for you, Graveyard Shift. Um... Hopefully you get to stay entertained during your your shift or your, your work is involved, whatever you do. Um, Denny's was not super involved, especially that night, that type of time of night, but was not super exciting and I didn't enjoy it. All right, so I was supposed to be able to click this. You see my keystroke pause going there. That's to avoid people from spamming the keystroke and getting too many keys in. Um, but when I click this, I'm supposed to be able to open this chest. Uh, and I'm not. So clearly, I must have turned it off. Uh, key code dot space. Space key. Where, where do I call this? Check player actions. All right. So we're looking at the pause level. That makes sense. Um, we don't do certain player actions if the pause level is a, above a certain amount. Uh, if we don't have a player selected, and that's possible because uh, in the run of the game, um, grocery manager, okay. Are you guys a 24 hour uh, grocery? Uh, I have to say, I really appreciate the 24 hour Safeways near me. Um, I, not in a while, I haven't in a while, but back in the day when I was, uh, maybe a few years ago, I would only shop at like 2 a.m. for some reason, I don't know why, but I would ride my bike down at 2 a.m. go shopping, and I appreciated that the store was open, but they were definitely stocking all night long. Um, and everyone was listening to headphones and stuff, so I thought that was not, actually not such a bad gig, I suppose. Uh, all right, so it's possible that players aren't active. If all four of your characters have done an action and they can't do any action, we can't do things like open. So you need to have a player selected. If the active player's next action is greater than today, than the current time, then you can't do anything. Uh, that makes sense. And if our turn-based wait is zero, this is basically the, in the turn-based mode. There's going to be times when you have to wait for the enemies to do their actions. So if that's above zero, then we don't do anything. 
And then if the keystroke pause is above zero, we don't do anything. So we're going to check the return key, escape key, space key. And that's where we're looking now. Oh, yeah, I guess it makes sense. COVID changed everything. I imagine it's probably easier to do the, the work you got to do without customers running around. I do remember the, the only headache that I would face as a customer. Um, and I didn't really mind it. So it was 2 a.m. So what am I going to do, right? Uh, is when I'm ready to check out and the person at the checkout was also stocking and they were like, you know, halfway down the, the store. Maybe they didn't hear me. They would have a bell and I'd ring the little bell. But um, so I just sit there for a couple minutes waiting. No big deal. But um, probably easier without customers around, I would imagine. Yeah, stocking all night. Let's see. Input get key on space. If we haven't hit space, then this does nothing. If the in-game menu is open, this does nothing. If an item is held, we're going to drop it. Otherwise, interact. Perfect. And then do the keystroke pause. Interact is what we're looking for. And this is what, hey, I commented out. Good. All right. To do. Update interact. Huh. Nice message for myself. All right. Look for enemy pickups. All right. And look for loot pickups. All right, we have loot pickups in the scene. It's just um, turned off, I guess. And I thought I had a chest open thing, but let's just add that, I guess. Whoa, what did I do? Press buttons and everything changed. <laughs> I have to say, I prefer, of course, uh, the game dev as a job which it's not a job right now um it brings in some money the infinite pbr stuff brings in some money which is nice but it's not anywhere near a full-time job but i prefer that but if i were to do a hourly gig uh again serving tables was not so bad uh especially if it's a place where you get good tips and this it's run smoothly denny's is not that place by the way do not i mean you'll cut your teeth at denny's but that's about it uh, for those of you who know Denny's, um, but something like inventory stocking wouldn't be so bad, honestly. I think that is, especially knowing people are listening to stuff. I could listen to podcasts. I could listen to stories. Um, you know what you gotta do, and you do it. And you can find your efficiencies. Probably working with cool people. Uh, that wouldn't be so bad. And I, it's not customer service. Anything that's not dealing with customer service is probably good. I hate customer service, even though serving tables are customer service. But you have control when you serve tables, you know? Uh, that was back in the day. I haven't served tables since 2007, I think. That was my last table serving job. All right, so... Um, I guess this is where we would look for things to do. So, I mean, we got enemy pickups. That's one thing. We got loot pickups, buttons to press, things to open. I guess we'll put in the things to open area. Let's start with that because we have a chest to open. What is this chest? How did I do this? I, this was working before in an earlier iteration. I listen to videos while I, while I walk. Um, I have to leave YouTube open the phone gets hot, but, um, I, you know, a lot of videos on YouTube, you don't actually have to watch. <laughs> Everyone hates working with customers. <laughs> it's totally true. It's a special person who enjoys customer service, uh, and dealing with customers. Man, my last serving job, it was at Nordstrom. Nordstrom, for those of you who might not know, is a fancy uh, department store. Very fancy around here in America. Probably other places too. I don't know how far it goes. But they have a restaurant, and I worked in the restaurant in there. And we had, we had a lot of really nice customers, and some of them tipped really well. And um, I think we also used to steal from the company too. Don't tell anyone, but we would... We would charge people for wine uh, when they would order wine or desserts during their meal. They would have to pay at the beginning, and then they sit down. And uh, if they paid in cash, we wouldn't always 
book it into the system. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Pretty sure my boss knew though. But he knew that they also were, uh, they never gave us raises, even though they kept raising prices. And so I think he may have turned a blind eye. Maybe not. Either way, I don't know how bad I feel about stealing from the company. 20 bucks here and there. Psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. Customer service. Oh, man. There's a spe special place in heaven. If there is a heaven, there's a special place for customer service people who do their job well, though. Because uh, that is... Yeah. All right. So we got a chest here. I swear this opened before. I have a loot script. What is this? <laughs> Temp hard coded items. Oh, interesting. It's been a while. Populate inventory. Populate forced items. Open box inventory. Where do I use that? Temp. Oh, temp chest, open chest. Where does this live? It doesn't live here. Temp chest. Can I search for it here? I can. Uh-huh. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's see. Tap chest on the lid. So this is basically the thing that opens. It's gonna open lid. Kind of makes sense to keep it on the lid. Every chest is gonna have some sort of lid, whether it's a jar or a pot or a hole in the ground that has a piece of wood on it, that's the lid. So let's rename this. This is why I pay 12 bucks a month for writer. Uh, we're gonna rename this to be Loot Lid and trigger loot lid trigger that's fairly descriptive I have to write myself a note if i press the right keys this is put on any chest or similar object on the lid that moves and will be what is triggered by the player actions. So players will be able to trigger this by either hitting space or clicking directly on uh, the lid, I suppose. Um, so we have our open and close animations, animator, loot. This is the loot that's inside the chest. Okay. Oh, I see. This is why it was temp, because I had forgotten that if I had O and shift down, then I would open it. Okay. So this was temporary stuff. Okay, so this would close it, because I put open and close in the same um, method here. I don't think I really need to do that. I should probably just make a closed chest. Because it's a lot more clear to have open chest and closed chest, right? It's not that big of a deal. Don't need to be fancy about it. Okay, so essentially what we want to do then is the actions is going to say there's a hierarchy of things that can be done. Um, and I think I had it in that hierarchy order here where the first thing we're going to look for any pickups. These are the most temporary things, right? Um, 
In this game, the enemies aren't going to disappear automatically, but they will appear when you kill them. So they're the most temporary thing. So we'll pick them up first. Um, and then if there's no enemy pickup, then we'll loot for just things that are dropped on the ground. If there are no things that are dropped on the ground, then we'll look for buttons to press. Um, or maybe we'll look for a treasure chest and stuff for things to open. Um, so let's do that. We'll do that hierarchy. We can always reorder things later. So I'll put that here. Um, so we're going to have to look for uh, open. So we'll say this. How, if open chests, um, then we will return. So if we're able to open a chest, we'll return and we'll make this method and we'll figure out how to open chests. We're going to have to search for chests in a certain radius. We'll hard code that for now, I suppose, uh, unless we've already added it somewhere. Oops, radius. No. Um, temp may lead distance. We'll keep that, we'll use that. Okay. All right, so we only use it twice there. Um, let's see the... Oh my gosh, Ikea returns? God, your buddy plays in heaven. I'm telling you, that's... It's a special person. It's a special person who could do that. I can't. I just, I would, I would quit really fast. Um, I'd be homeless and quit because I actually I wouldn't do that. But you know what I mean. Smashing barrels. So um, I'm actually not going to have destructibles, I think, in this game. Um, I'm going to avoid that entirely and not do destructibles. Um, but a destructible container would probably have its open would be trigger that destruction and it would also destroy the script, so there is no close. That's that's my best guess as to how I'd approach that without changing the script. I, I might just change the script. It would be the same um, the same tag or whatnot, um, but instead of loot lid trigger, it would be loot destruct trigger, perhaps something like that. That's my best guess. Uh, networking is a nightmare. Sometimes temporary stuff becomes an, the item you're in your game. I made a temp network loading script and the team used it like it was made to stay. Honestly, that, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? I would imagine, I don't remember exactly my thought process when I made the temp, whatever it was, but um, the whole point was to make it, uh, you know, work temporarily and then make it update. But if, if, if the temp version works well, then, you know. Yeah, uh, I avoid networking as well. That's another thing I wanted to just... I'll save that for number three. Uh, by number three, I mean the Barbarian three. So my friends who know me uh, know about, of course, The Barbarian, my first big game. Um, and uh, they always ask me if this game is The Barbarian 2. And so in my head, I refer to it as The Barbarian 2, even though it's not at all The Barbarian 2. Uh, so the third version means the Barbarian 3. So, in my head. Um, every game I make, if it's, a, if it's an RPG game, will be another Barbarian, the Barbarian game. <laughs> Alright. Open box inventory. So we're going to call this um, from here. And we need to see, is this not tagged? Um, we need to do like a... Um, what is this? Sphere cast around the player to see if they're close enough to get all. Um, we're really. Oh, God, I hate this part. Trigonometry. All right. So, what we really need to do is see is the player in front of a box within the range and in the view? Um, and specifically this. And so, we need. A collider on this or a trigger on this so let's do that let's start with that we need the trigger a collider 
uh, box collider is a trigger. Um, all right, we'll keep it big like that. And, oh, good, I have a chest tag already. Tag that. All right. So, I never like writing this code. Um, uh, what's, where are my actions? We're down here, right? Open chest. Okay. Return false. Assume we didn't open the chest. Um, let's see. We need 3D. Get all objects around a point by tag. Or get all, this, how about this? In front of a player by tag. That's more specific. Not just game magic by tag. I really want to do like a cast, right? A sphere cast or, or something like that. Because I want to find all the objects. There could be like a hundred chests, and I don't want to iterate through all those. Um, overlap sphere, perhaps. And then check the angle between the player camera and the object. And if it's under, I don't know, whatever percent. I need to take my vitamins. What happens when my brain starts having to actually work? I have to take vitamins. I don't think these do anything. They're gummy vitamins. I've read a lot of studies saying vitamins don't do anything. But I also believe in the placebo effect. Collisions are only detected, yeah. But what here I'm going to do is a sphere cast or overlap sphere of the player, essentially, the radius. And then go through these looking for a chest. And then check those chests to see if it's within the angle of the camera and the chest itself. And I guarantee you, I hate this part. I don't know why I've never saved the code or something, because I really freaking hate this part. I hate trigonometry. Um, but this is what we're going to do, I think. So, no, not that. Wrong button. This. Uh, chest sphere. Chest sphere. All right, center is going to be, where is it going to be? Um, probably a reference already for the player camera, but I just need to remember where that is. Not all player interactions will be done through a trigger, trigger box. Um, so there's two ways of opening the chest. One, you can click. One, you can press space, and if you're close enough, it will just do it. Um, so you can just like spam space bar to do a bunch of stuff back to back. Um, let's see. So, actions is just global zero, and we need player. Do I have a reference to this object? Doesn't look like, oh, I do, player object. Good, good good for me for doing that. That was very forward thinking of me. All right, so this is gonna be game dot, or game dot player, hey, game dot player. Okay, apparently I'm not referencing it yet. I guess not. Oh, yeah, I am right there. All right, go back down. Game. Okay, player object, oh, no, okay, what's going on? So on game, game, 
player object, all right, and game is itself referencing game. Maybe I have to do game dot game. Oh, of course. It's late and I have had that one old pal. Why isn't this a uh, going on here plumbing this game dot player object why why can't it resolve player object game dot player object That's why. That's why. Okay. And temp or melee. I'm just going to say melee. Oh wow, I must be tired. All right, <laughs> I must be really tired. What's going on? Um, we need a new name for, for live streams where I code where I'm tired. Um, comatose encoding. <laughs> New game, new show, comatose coding. <laughs> coding when you're really tired. Uh, all right, so this is this is the code we're actually copying, not not the whole thing. Distance equals that. So radius is here. Center is game dot game dot player object or game dot player object maybe. There it is. All right, that's holy cow. Holy cannoli. Why is this giving me a, an underline? Oh, dot position, dot transform, dot position. All right, there we go. Um, and I only want uh, of a certain type, so Unity 3D overlap. Chest laying doors. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Being tired is like being drunk, isn't it? Like they say, if you're driving while tired, that you're like driving while drunk, something like that. Overlap sphere. Layer mask. Ooh, God. Um. I guess I need to make it a layer, not a uh, tag. All right, that's fine. Let us set this up. So I think what I'll do is set my override so I don't lose stuff. Go into my prefab for this required object thing and set a new object called layer masks and a new component called layer masks layer masks I did it right I think I want just a easy to access layer mask with all my layer masks so I'm going to make this into a namespace not that namespace uh, Infinity PBR, Legend of the Stones. Oops. 
and we will say public layer mask chests or just yeah chests we'll just link chests um, so on our actions we will reference this oh I need to do one more thing uh, yeah layer masks and then copy some code should be able to reference that so I'll put my layer mask there and I'll say where's layer mask go it is the one two three third one over so layer mask dot chests perfect I'll have to set that still um, right here I don't know if I have a layer for chest yet. In my head, I have my inner JSON storing telling me that I can do this better because I'm suddenly thinking like, really, it has to be not doesn't have to be a chest. I mean, I think there's an okay way of doing it, but perhaps I could be looking for loot, chests, enemies, all with the same sphere cast, one sphere cast, and look for anything that can be picked up. And then first find if there's a enemy that can be picked up, then find if there's loot, and then a chest without having to do multiple sphere casts. And then the layer would be like player interactable. So if we want to do the right thing, and we do because we're good people in this world, let's try that before doing what we think might be the wrong thing. Not the wrong thing like we're an evil person, but the wrong thing like it's not the best way of doing it. Player interactable. All right, so we will do this. How about this? Change this to player interactable. And I spelled it wrong. Don't do that. Okay, player interactable. We're gonna have to change actions a little bit. It's okay. Got an error. Okay, um, and we'll change this to um, I'm going to return this hit colliders. So we're going to return a colliders array. Um, and then we'll go through it. Um, So we're going to call this uh, player interactable actable colliders. All right. So look for things to open. This is really going to be look for all of this stuff. So collider uh, player um, interactables equals player 
Sliders. Okay. Ha ha, committed my changes. What are you talking about? Committing changes. I live wild. Uh, and yes, I committed them at 10.58 p.m. <laughs> I actually want to get a uh, plastic set up. Somebody, somebody was talking about plastic in them. Must have been a meetup. I think the Wednesday night meetup group I go to. Somebody was talking about plastic and uh, they enjoyed it. And I wanted to get that set up. My only hesitation was the amount of disk space. I don't want to pay for the disk space I use. Um, because there's a lot. Uh, yeah. I already pay for disk space with Collaborate. But I don't... Wait, I guess maybe I do back this one up with Collab. What do I do? Do I? Nope, I don't. All right. Uh, player interactable. Player interactable. Let's see. So we're getting the interactive colliders. So then we'll do things like check for enemies, check for loot pickup. And then here is where we will still do a check for chests. And we will pass in this interactables. There we go. So we will still do this um, this this uh, thing. Assume we don't find any. So now we're going to go through the interactables um, using this code. Uh, okay, for each collider in interactables. Um, now we're going to see if the tag is, if the tag is, um, chest. So, uh, it's probably a better way of doing this too, maybe through I am chest, um, what's the term? Wow, I am tired. Let's just get this done, then I can go to sleep. And let's see. Um, so if hit collider dot game object dot tag equals chest. Or rather, if it doesn't equal chest, then continue. All right, so if it's not a chest, we don't do anything. If it is a chest, then we will say hit collider dot game object dot get component um, loot lid trigger open. dot open chest is this not it's private all right we'll just do this Just say open and instead of looking for the tag, we could actually probably look for this component. Is that like um, 
pit collider dot game object dot try get components um, so we'd say loot lid trigger lid and then try get component um, type of loot the trigger out to lid and I think I did that wrong and we're gonna have to do also if not then continue um, and type of loot lid trigger maybe like that is that out out lid Look it up. When in doubt, look it up. Yeah. I've, I, I figure constantly, oh, just like that. All right, I'm, I had too much. Constantly try to, um, Refactor, it's, it's a constant. I just assume I'm always refactoring. So it figures out what type based on this. I get it. All right, so if we don't find one, then we'll continue. Otherwise, we'll say lid dot open. Unless it's already open, in which case we want to close it. So. We really want to say lid public void toggle. And then we'll say huh. This is an interesting one. Guess we have to keep track of whether it's open or not. But then that means I'm going to have to save the data. And this is where I want to save the data. Or should I just assume that they all start closed? I don't know. Do it later. If is open, then we'll do close. Uh, else, open. So in our actions, instead of open, we'll do toggle. So it can go either way. Um, maybe that works. I have a keystroke pause, so it shouldn't do it over and over. And it should be only when you hit space down. Um, but we'll have to see. Here it comes. Nothing. Nothing happened. Why didn't anything happen? Check for chests in cat length. Uh, interactable objects. All right. I spelled that wrong. This chest looks huge, doesn't it? That's a, 
human sized chest right there. Zero interactable objects. Well, 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 well. Let's see. Um, maybe it doesn't. It's not supposed to be a trigger. That's probably okay. Maybe it's supposed to have a rigid body. <sighs> oh my gosh! It's Alive. Come back. Come back here. Jeez. Maybe it's supposed to have a rigid body that is kinematic. Nope. All right, what's the deal? Have to check the overlap sphere, I guess. Oh, this could be part of it though. There we go. Oh, shoot, a lot worked. Okay, let me fix this and figure out what exactly beyond just saying the layer to be correct. And uh, just override that for now. So that's suddenly gone. Why? Well, that part worked, but it's just not um, visible. Oh, the camera must not be seeing it. So where's our camera? Where's our camera? There we go. I don't know why it's dark though. Why is it dark? What did I do? Is it the light? It's probably the light as well. Where's my light? Directional light. There we go. All right, light. All right, let's see how well it works. I might have to change more stuff, but it was working before, so when I had that test version, so it should be working now, except the right click won't work on these objects. All right, so we move forward. Can I do it from here? Too far, too far. They're close enough. It opens. I don't know if it made a sound. Oh, shit. Look at that. I honestly didn't expect that to work. That surprised me. I did not expect the right clicking to work. I knew the left clicking would. I guess I should have expected the right click to work because I just changed the code on the same area of the left clicking. So, well, look at that. Got new audio I can put now. This will come in handy. So the only thing I need to think about now, of course, 
is that when I'm in here, see how you can pass it from there to there? That's cool. Um, so I'm going to have to code for this too. Ooh, oh, shoot. Look at that. You know what? Maybe I should never do a close because does it really make sense to close? No, it doesn't. And if it's already open, I shouldn't do anything because of all that. But that'll be something. Oh, look at that. I found a bug. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. So the problem is that this doesn't match this. Um, and every chest is going to have different sizes. There's going to be smaller chests that have fewer grids, so not as much stuff can go in it. Um, so I might need to say if it's not the inventory, then center it and maybe bring it up some. Otherwise, oh, that button didn't work right at all. Oh, another thing to do. The X button didn't work. The close button doesn't work. The close logic needs to be updated. The clicking on the chest needs to work and it doesn't. And the other thing is that I want to make sure the player is looking at the chest. Where that was. So I'm close to the chest, but if I go over here, look this way. I shouldn't be able to open it. So I'll have to change that too. But I am tired now. It's been a long day. Hang out with some friends. It was a fun time. All right. So thank you for watching, everybody. Grid inventory system. If you like the grid inventory system, check out the game modules. Because that is part of the modules. Most of the modules have um, are very flexible, where they're not supposed to be very specific. But the character creation scene and the inventory are very specific. So if you like that drag and drop system, um, this drag and drop system, then check out that because it's very boilerplate, but it works pretty cool and it can be customized with the, the colors and the graphics and the customized and stuff. So it's cool. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad uh, people came around. I, I wasn't sure doing an impromptu Saturday night stream if that would, uh, people would be around. I'm glad you folks were around. So thanks for chatting, uh, Corey and Brian and Jason too and the bowl. Um, yeah, I hope one day I'll be, I mean, as long as I have a day job, it's probably not going to happen. But one day I would like to have like a set schedule where I'm like, yeah, I do this every, you know, these times a week or something. But um, I just figured I wanted to get some stuff done and might as well stream at the same time because uh, I got done what I wanted to get done for the most part. So, yeah. And yes, uh, oh, 3 a.m. Geez, yeah. Uh, East Coast time. Um in 10 hours, me too. 10 hours or so, we have, this is us, we have Jason Wyman's game dev show. So definitely, where is it? Does he have uploading, up, upcoming live streams here? No. Videos live streams upcoming live streams come over here click the like and subscribe and give it a message saying 10 no no nine hours to go i think we should all come to this page and say something cool can't wait so that jason comes and says what the heck happened at midnight his time look at that crazy beard uh so everyone, take a t moment, come to the game dev show, click a like, do the reminder if you want, 
subscribe if you haven't, and give a comment here so that Jason wakes up tomorrow and thinks, what the heck happened? Why are there a few comments all at the same time? Or don't. It's fine. But I will see you all another time. Ontario, Canada. Canadian. I don't know why people ever decide to live anywhere north of where it starts snowing, including all of Canada, Maine, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Montana, any of those places. Maybe not all of Canada, but a lot of it. Uh, yeah, I can give a link to that. Let me see. I got a, actually, let me do it like this. I got two computers here. Uh, so I will go here. You guys see this? This cute little monkey thing? Yeah. To live anywhere north. Everyone, go say a comment. Something funny. Funny or something. So Jason can wake up to some random comments. Any of those places. Maybe not all of them. Snow capital of the East Coast. I am happy oh, yeah. to not live where it snows. I like to visit the snow once every two years, but that's up enough for me. So now we're in the um, the Inception style, and this is going to get darker and darker and darker because of my screen is doing the whole getting rid of blue color stuff. If I do that slower, then it would be even cooler, probably. Let me see. Because I have to, I have to work with the lag. I am happy to not live where it snows. I like to visit the snow. Oh, and the audio too. Shoot. Enough for me. So now we're in the um, the Inception style. And this is going to get darker and darker and darker because of my right. screen is doing the whole getting rid of blue color stuff. If I do that slower, then it would be even cooler. Because I have to, I have to work with the lag. Oh, and the audio too. Shoot. This is what happens when I'm tired. I know. These people way back in the day were like, Oh, this summer's really nice here. I bet the winters are cool are nice too. Let's just stay here. I don't mind being inside for nine months of the year because I'll die if I go outside. Really? You're all Canadian? This is what happens when One I'm Irish tired. person? That's fine, I like Canadians. I work with a lot of Canadians. All right, that's enough of that. No, these people way back in the day were like, Oh, the monkey went away. Oh, there's the monkey. I think this is monkey exploitation. They're probably making quite a bit of mon money off this monkey. Um, oh my gosh. A monkey and a puppy. I don't know how old the monkey is. They say baby monkey, but hey, it looks like a baby monkey. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, for those of you working the graveyard shift, I hope it goes very well and the exact way there's a monkey butt that you want it to go. Thanks for joining. I will talk to you all another time.